Hi, everyone. Welcome to the VRAR Bytes podcast, our weekly show featuring the movers and shakers here in Central Florida. Today, my guest is John Gress, the academic director at the Digital Animation and Visual Effects Studi uh, School at Universal Studios, also called the Dave School. John is also the chief pipeline officer at Onset Facilities, who are focused on cutting edge technologies for real time motion picture and VR AR production. And John is also the chairman of the VR AR Association Global Universities Committee that's focused on creating community and collaboration between universities and technical colleges that have programs in XR. Now I've known John for a couple of years and one thing that really shines through is his passion for digital technologies and for helping people learn to create and sharing his knowledge and experience. So John, welcome to the VR AR Bytes podcast. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing at the Dave School. Thanks, John. Thanks very much. It's good to see you and um, and welcome to everybody. Um, at the Digital Animation Visual Effects School, we have a kind of a very specific niche on, on the uh, VR AR technologies, which is really teaching people how to create the content uh, because um, in the end, it all comes down to content. There's all, you have the infrastructure, you've got great ideas for implementation and training and, and all of these things, but in the end, somebody's got to be able to produce the actual assets that go into these uh, into these technologies. So over the past, you know, Dave School's been here for 20 years. I've been here at the school since 2003, um, on and off. And um, we, we started off in motion picture visual effects. As you see behind me, the signatures on those posters are my students. Uh, we moved from there into around 2009, I saw uh, UDK3, which, lit up a candle in my head saying, wow, real time is going to be the way that things are going to go. We did a pilot program and um, now here we are with a full bachelor's program in game and immersive technologies. So um, we are focused on sort of that high end uh, content for um, for the assets that go into, into XR type technologies. And, and so I know that, you know, you always are, are highlighting students that have, you know, done some great things in some of the productions. I, I saw recently you had a couple that worked on a couple of the films. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, going going way back, even like you look at the like, uh, you know, the Marvel movies uh, over time, pretty much every movie that comes out or every game that comes out, a major one has at least a Dave school student or two. Or sometimes in the case of Marvel movies, at some point we had up to 60 uh, students working on per film. So uh, our, our students are, we're kind of like the unsung heroes of the, uh, of the industry. A lot of people don't, haven't heard of us, but we've got tons of, tons of students out there in uh, all different fields from military simulation to uh, game and, and immersive technologies to obviously film, architectural, advertising. Um, we teach them how to, how to create the 3D and, and sort of be 3D generalists. Yeah, I mean, and that content is so important, you know, while while we're seeing all of this technology moving so quickly and now we're getting the devices and the infrastructure and, and the tools to create the solutions, like you said, at the end of the day, you know, XR is all about the content. Right, right. And it's, and it's funny because coming from where you and I both probably came from, we're always kind of pushing forward uh, past where the technology actually is. So it takes a while for the technology to catch up to us to be of you know sort of that kind of quality that we're we're thinking about, especially in terms of military simulation, in terms of really theatrical type of immersive experiences. The the graphics and the hardware and the infrastructure for that always kind of lag behind. So now we're finally at a really exciting time where it's close, man. It's catching up. It's getting right there to where we're going to start seeing if if we're not already seeing real time pushing the limits of like what we were doing in you know motion picture. Yep, exciting. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna now move on to the five and five, which is five questions in five minutes. Okay. Starting with number one, what is the most interesting project that you've seen or worked on that uses XR technologies? Well, for that one, I would have to say, I, I'm gonna sort of plead the fifth and take a non-answer on that one. Um, there are so many exciting things going on in the, in, in the world right now uh, with all of these technologies. I think one of the most exciting sort of areas for me is the uh, areas of uh, AI and machine learning as it applies to the types of work we do in motion picture visual effects and immersive technologies. Give you kind of some of the examples of some of the, some of the things we're working with, uh, creating 3D avatars 
with just this, being yeah. able to set up your phone, do a full 3D photogrammetry avatar and have it pop out in, in three or four minutes. Um, <clears throat> also, um, audio. Uh, there's, a, there's a company called Respeacher, uh, often the, um, uh, I think they're based in Ukraine uh, or, or Russia that is doing a, um, uh, an AI machine learning uh, recreation of vocal vocal patterns where you can actually train it to learn a, a person's voice and then speak it back in somebody else's voice. Um, those are things that are going to be really, you know, uh, important when it comes to, you, I, I'm sure you've seen some of the, some of the new releases, companies like Real Illusion and all these companies have these character creators. They need to be able to speak at some point. So natural, real natural speech and machine learning uh, is really important. Um, another one is in things like that we do in post-processing and, and uh, uh, you know, post like color correction and uh, motion tracking and uh, camera matching and all this stuff is now, I think the future is going to be sitting in our hands. Um, we can already shoot in 4K, 5K on our phones. So I think to me, the most exciting thing is all of these things are converging. All these technologies and machine learning and, and AI are converging, going to be allow us to put on a headset and do things like recreate entire cities with people who move and talk and speak naturally without, you know, without a lot of manual uh, animating and, and animated work. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about significantly reducing the cost of developing content and adding new capabilities. And I think this is ubiquitous across all industries, right? Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, question number two. What do you think the biggest challenges are facing adoption of XR? Well, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know, obviously, um, we talk about this a lot in the universities committee, which is COVID hit. And um, obviously, when you're dealing with VR and headsets, you're dealing with a physical thing that's transmitted from one person to another, uh, especially in, a, in an academic setting or in an or in uh, industrial type setting. So I think one of the challenges, um, I, think, I think there's great strides being made in the equipment um, coming down in price and being um, more easily accessible for the average person. I think development platforms are are definitely maturing to the point where developing for those is getting easier. So I think that the, the biggest challenges right now is in, uh, is in bigger institutions being able to, um, you know, obviously a bigger institution, uh, an academic setting or an industrial um, or enterprise setting is looking for an ROI. And I think that there's, uh, you know, a lot of questions as to what the ROI is and, 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 and how to implement. I think the biggest hurdle is how do, how do we implement this? It's such a complex thing for people like you and I have worked in different industries. All the pieces are kind of in our head, but for the average person, it's, you know, you've got the programming side, you've got the artistic and, and creation side, you've got the actual content development side. There's so much there. It's like putting together a production like a movie. It's, it's a large undertaking. And I think the, the biggest hurdle is um, simplifying that process down to, to where it's easy for a company to implement that and, and, uh, and push that forward for, easily, for more easy adoption. You know, it, it's interesting because a couple of years ago, our discussions around what are the use cases and, and where is potential ROI, and now we're getting into large corporations trying to figure out how do we scale this? How do we deploy it out in our global infrastructure and manage it securely? Right, exactly. I mean, there's 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 such a huge undertaking in the, the infrastructure, say for a college or a university. We just had this discussion the other day. Um, it's one thing to be able to create a course for for a certain school but what do you do about the infrastructure about the security about students logging on about uh about how a database for managing all these courses in vr about the uh the bandwidth you need to to be able to make that happen so there's a there's a lot of moving parts to it for sure so i think that it's i agree with you i think um you know i think across the board it's ubiquitous that most companies understand now the advantages they see the effect you know, the effectiveness of it. So I think it's now just about how do we roll this out? I think it, it definitely has progressed. Yep. Number three, who in the VR AR community inspires you or who do you follow to find out what's happening? Wow. Again, so many, uh, so many, so many people. Um, Alan Smithson um, always is on the cutting edge of things. Uh, people at um, all the different, all the different um, 
platform companies, uh, even even people like you know Mark Grubb of uh, uh, UPS. When you listen to these people talk, and they're talking about how they're implementing, one of the things uh, Mark said in, in an interview I saw recently was, he said, when people only understand the perfect picture, they do the perfect picture. And to me, that was a really great encapsulation of the advantages and benefits of of the XR technologies is it's the ability to immerse somebody in the perfect picture, which you as an enterprise or you as a, uh, you know, uh, um, any, any kind of organization wants your students, your employees, your followers to understand and be able to emulate, you sub immerse them into this perfect picture. And uh, as, as, as Mark said in his interview, he can tell when he walks into a UPS van, whether they were trained in XR or they weren't trained by a person, because the, X, the people trained in XR always have, it's perfect. And I think that that kind of says a lot. Yep, absolutely. Uh, number four, are you working on anything at the moment that would be interesting to our members? Yeah, we're working on a lot of things. Um, mostly the, the things that we are working on here are in how to train uh, students in a year's time to go from zero to being able to create these type of assets that are usable for, uh, for enterprise, for um, for for motion picture for game and um, we've we've you know we've been doing it for 20 years we've been doing it a long time we've been successful at doing it but we've really over the past we we actually started the big push into immersive uh, technologies about two years before uh, COVID hit uh, people kind of were looking at us for that those couple of years like we had a third third arm growing out of our head um, and then suddenly COVID hit and now everybody understands what we're talking about so um, yeah so it, so we've made a major push into that and that's kind of the uh, the main the main thrust of what we've been doing is is you know we're a kind of a small squirrely mobile school so we have the ability to stay on the very very bleeding edge of what's going on and you see uh, in our tech in our technology in our industries the industry changes every couple of months, right. literally the new technologies come out. So you really have to have the ability to stay out in front, kind of, you know, test it, see, see if, see what stuff is vaporware, see what stuff is actually working, see what stuff works in a pipeline and then teach it. So. All right. Excellent. And so you're creating the creators. I like that. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and the last question, what would you like to see from the VRAR Association? Wow. Uh, you know, our, I, we've been blessed to have you and, and the chapter here. Um, I remember when the, when the chapter first started, we were so excited that we were getting a chapter here. And um, just all of the events, uh, you know, unfortunately, when COVID hit, it, it took a lot of our face-to-face -face type things um, down. But uh, one of the things that I would love to see, we've, we've, helped uh, organize a couple of these, which is actual immersive VR events, which yeah. I think are, are fantastic. Um, uh, it also allows people from the outside of our community to, to, to join us here. But I think you guys are doing a fantastic job um, and, and we're so happy to be a part of it. Um, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing and uh, bringing more, more great folks into the system. Okay, great. And what I'll do is I'll take that on board because I think it is time for us to do another immersive session. Um, the, next, the next chapter meeting, I think we're talking about having a, a, a feature or theme of the new headset technologies. And maybe yeah, we can also do something immersive. Okay. Well, thank you very much, John. Really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, John. Good to see you. Okay, our guest today was John Gress, Academic Director at the Dave School and uh, Committee Chair of the Universities and Colleges Committee of the VRA Association. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.